Dear colleagues, mentioning historic plague outbreaks, be it the Justinianic plague, be it the Black Death, often leads to a public perception like the collapse of social structure, sick and dying people left alone, and mass graves where the plague victims are buried hastily and without burial rites, as it was described, for example, by Procopius for the first outbreak of the Justinianic plague in Constantinople. With this paper, we would like to present for, um, examples from two early medieval cemeteries where this could not be confirmed. On the contrary, the examples from both cemeteries Graves with ADNA confirmed plague victims show clearly that the death had not only been buried with and according to the contemporary common burial rites, but that the keys had also been prepared for the funeral and at least been dressed carefully, but most likely also washed and cleaned before. First, we would like to show you the locations where uh, we are talking about and the archaeological evidence, which means introduce you to both cemeteries and the ADNA uh, confirmed plague graves, even so we had some hint on those graves on the talks before. <coughs> Secondly, we would like to discuss the evidence of this archaeological and anthropological record for what we can conclude on the strategies the contemporary societies developed to deal with the plague. And third, we would like to ask the questions how the plague came to the settlements connected with these cemeteries and which people might have had the highest risks to be infected. Both cemeteries we are talking about are located in the south of present-day Germany in Upper Bavaria, east of the modern town of Munich. The early medieval cemeteries of Aschheim and Altenerding are two of quite a number of known early medieval or Mer Merovingian cemeteries. Um, on the right map, I hope you can see it, they are charted in red. In the case of Aschheim, also the contemporary settlement is known. Settlements in general known from this period are mapped here in green. Aschheim and Altenerding are both located at the northern margin of the Munich gravel plain, as you see in the left picture. Quite close to bogs or wetlands. This might have been important for the early medieval settlements as one of the characteristics of the gravel plain is the absence of surface water. The location near to the wetland means that the inhabitants did not have to dig very deep for their wells to get fresh water. The dry land of the gravel plain, on the other hand, was most likely better for animal husbandry than for agriculture. First, I would like to show you um, the early medieval cemeteries of Aschheim. Here, more than one Merovingian cemetery had been excavated, but only from one burial place are so far confirmed plague graves known. The biggest cemetery from Aschheim is the cemetery called Aschheim by Jovarenring, with 444 burials um, in 402 graves. Contemporary in use was the smaller cemetery of Aschheim am Wasserturm, with so far 25 excavated uh, graves, but more graves from the cemetery um, are known but currently not accessible because they are lying under a neighboring nursery garden. Both cemeteries were in use between 480, 490 and 670, 680, um, the states are from the archaeological finds out of the graves. The third known early medieval cemetery of Aschheim is located at the church, which is dated with its earliest, um, there is it, 
um, which is dated with its <coughs> earliest building from the end of the 6th century on, and the church, well, the later building of the church exists still today. Well, as I said, we have here, uh, we have only confirmed black graves in the big cemetery of Aschheim by Uwarling, but it is also, uh, must be mentioned, that from the other cemeteries so far, um, no graves had been tested for Yersinia pestis. Here is some more data of the cemetery of Aschheim by Uwarling, um, are shown here on the slide. And to those of you who are familiar with those Merovingian cemeteries, you see that this is more or less a very typical Merovingian cemetery, um, as it is, well, typical for this time. Well, besides one fact, and that is a slightly higher number of double and multiple burials um, that occur in this cemetery. <coughs> Double and multiple burials in general are um, well seldom but not uncommon in Merovingian cemeteries. Um, well, the point that was here interesting was the well quite high number of eight percent of the um, graves. Some of these um, double and multiple burials had been examined for Yersinia pestis, and so far. We know from the cemetery of Aschheim by Warenring six confirmed plague graves. These are all double and multiple burials, as so far only the double and multiple burials had been tested. So the examinations of single graves for Yersinia pastors are still missing. But if we ha now have a look um, on these confirmed plague <coughs> graves, and, well, just forget for a moment um, the fact that there are two, three or more persons had been buried in one um, grave pit. If we just look at the burials, it can be noticed that each person had been laid out carefully on their bed as it was common in early medieval graves. Quite a number of the deceased has, had been equipped with grave goods as well, here are the grave goods marked in red. And as the grave goods um, in the cemetery of Aschheim by Warenring mostly were personal equipment like dress equipment, jewelry, tools, weapons, we can assume that the dead had also been carefully prepared for the funeral. They had been dressed <coughs> and they had been equipped for the funeral as the Merovingian burial rites claimed. Therefore, we could notice that the burials of the confirmed plague victims were performed in the same way as other contemporary graves. Here, two randomly chosen single graves from the same cemetery might show the similarity of the burials. Besides, some of the richest burials of the cemetery can be found among the plague graves. In the cemetery of Aschheim by Warungring, most of the confirmed black graves can also be considered as graves of the local elite. But not only the cemetery of Aschheim provided some black graves, as mentioned before, the early medieval cemetery of Altenerding, approximately 25 kilometers northeast of Aschheim or about five hours on foot away, also revealed black graves. Here it was also a double burial of a man and a woman, very similar to those we have seen in the cemetery of Ascha. The cemetery of Altenerding um, also <coughs> dates to the early Middle Ages. It was in use from 450 until 670, 680. It is with at least 1,521 graves larger than the cemetery of Aschheim, but as you can see on the of the plan here of the cemetery, um, many graves are located above or below each other, so it is much more difficult here to find undisturbed graves for investigation. The location of the confirmed black burial here is marked in red. The 
burials from the early medieval cemeteries of Aschheim and Altenerding show that black victims had been dressed and prepared carefully for the funeral. Compared to other graves from these cemeteries on the one hand and to contemporary burials in general, nothing basically indicates that the Yersinia pestis infected individuals had been treated different than other deceased. Among the buried who um, were infected with, with plague occurred some of the richest and most well-equipped graves of the cemeteries. Therefore, it cannot be proven on the base of the early medieval plague graves of the Munich gravel plain that, as Procopius, for example, writes, quote, at that time all the customary rites of burial were overlooked, quote ends. On the contrary, the burial rites, as far as reconstructible, had been carefully conducted. Their only difference is that the so far confirmed victims of the plague <coughs> seems to have been more often buried in double or multiple burials. However, as mentioned, the screening of the single burials is still in an initial stage. Therefore, we must assume that the plague <coughs> victims were handled as other dead bodies. They were not only dressed up carefully, but most likely also washed and cleaned as they had been passed away. But according to the contemporary written sources we have from the Justinianic plague, this behavior would not have been expected. But where did the plague came from? According to written sources, with which we have from different regions, um, in different numbers, we can collect the occurrence of the Justinianic plague, especially in the Mediterranean, and but also in part of present-day France. This map of Roman roads, which had been most likely still in use in the early medieval ages, um, might give some hints on how the Justinianic plague traveled. And as so far the known plague graves on the Munich gravel plain were so well equipped, um, well equipped graves from an upper class or the elite of the Merovingian society, it had been maybe especially those people who had the super regional connections who had been especially especially exposed to Yersinia pestis. The Justinianic plague was, nevertheless, a disease that affected Europe in the late antiquity, but, it occur but it, uh, its occurrence appears not everywhere as drastic and with mass graves as the written sources make us believe. To get a more different, differentiated picture about the pandemic, its effects and the reactions of the contemporary societies, it is necessary to examine different regions with several sources and use especially anthropological examinations of ancient DNA and archaeological sources um, as well to get a well, more, more better picture of um, this disease. Thank you very much for your attention.